Uh, I think that is right. Rather than having to play telephone, like we need someone from the game team kind of speaking directly to you guys um, and coordinating that flow of information. I think that's something that we could do a lot better with. And the good news is, yeah, I think, you know, it's going to get a lot better this year. Uh, the, right, like we talk about like, why was it so like, why was it so important that Axie became a household name in Web3? Why is it important that we grew so much this year, right? Well, part of it is okay, right? Like we got the funding, um, you know, both in the community treasury, also Sky Mavis to be able to execute on our long-term vision without having to worry about, you know, short-term monetary restrictions. Obviously we still have to move as quickly as possible because, right, like it doesn't matter how much money you have if you lose, right? Like we're here to win, right? Like winning is the number one. Um, all right, but, right, like, so growing was really important in that all these awesome, people from the traditional gaming world that are maybe a little bit more open to crypto are like, hey, like this guy Mavis, right? This Axie Infinity, this is really something. And this guy from Niantic is one of them. And he's gonna be, right, like he's gonna be joining the team. We're gonna announce it. Um, and I think he's gonna be really, really key to setting better framings around right like what to think about with the game um so yeah I, I think that's gonna be really important um also right like i think like you know so i study uh so, so like let's let's also talk about like why do we sometimes obscure information without just sharing everything so i studied clausewitz right i studied military strategy uh in university right and one one of the ideas behind war and grand strategy and right like Napoleonic or Prussian war strategy is right you like you hold your forces you hold your fire right and then you unleash everything with a at a dramatic crucial decisive moment and that maximizes um, your strength and your force so I think like to some extent we've done this in the past around our launches right we, we want to hold our our cards close to our chest and then put everything out on the table for maximum effect. But I also understand that, and I think we're, you know, we also understand that, you know, sometimes this can cause uneasiness among the community. So I think we, you know, we, we should do a better, we, we need to get to a, a better middle ground, I think, um, so that you guys know a little bit more about the destination because, right, this is a community owned game and you guys need to be more involved with the building process in order to do that or you need to understand a little bit more about like where we're at what the current status of things is so that's you know i think that's like the tension um that's innate to this project is right for growth purposes sometimes we want to be a little bit more tight-lipped but right like in, in the spirit of a community-owned game right you want to share more and involve people more so i think this the inherent tension and that's something that uh we're thinking about a lot and i think we need to correct a little bit towards you know the side of sharing more so you know i think that when you have a smaller force that that type of style of um attack <laughs> makes a lot of sense but when you have millions and millions you have a horde it requires a lot more coordination and communication among mm. among the leaders so I, I like that i really like that and i i like uh, your openness about it too um looking forward to more communication i think that it helps um meter people's expectations as well. I think when there's silence, people get irrationally um, expectant that you're going to solve all their lives, life's woes <laughs> without uh, their, their work or involvement. So I think it also helps to dampen people's expectations uh, moving forward as well. So Man, it's awesome. Anyway, I really like this. You, people ask when burning mechanism. Well, guess what? We just had 100,000 axes burnt as part of a Lunar New Year um, release. With yeah, the, shout, out, shout out to the Marketplace team. They put this together like really quickly, really crisp, right? I think I also want to iterate that, right? The purpose of this was to do a couple of things. First, we want to test to make sure that everything worked. We needed to build the, you know, the pipe, the the piping uh, to actually be able to do these types of events, right? I think you guys see that, right? There's the tab. So, right, like it's clear that we'll do more of these types of things in the future. Well, trains have different second, destinations too, right? So, I mean. And then second, right? Like we also want to gather some data, right? Where one thing is like, okay, how many people 
would be down to release their axi for something that's you know purely cosmetic, right? That's also one of the reasons that we don't want to make these make these things too useful or you know comment too much on right like potential utility because we we want it to be more about like okay how many people are willing to just release their axes for something that's cool, uh, something that's more you know pure, purely cosmetic, um, and yeah so we want to be and we we did some models around how many people we thought or how many people and how many axes we thought would be released based on what we thought the prize pool you know was estimated to be worth um so that will also right like we'll also be able to calibrate that data in the future if it's like right like we'll be able to use this data to say hey we want to remove a million axes from the economy right what kind of reward pool do we need to think about in order to achieve that effect, right? So it's giving us a lot of helpful data on how to balance the economy in the future. Awesome, I loved it. And I'm glad to hear that you, um, you found it to be a successful launch. I, I, I loved it. I was ready to, to burn even more. I really wanted that Crimson Tiger. I think it's really, really cute. So um, I, was, I was glad I was able to get one of those. I would not have stopped until I did. Um, so let's talk a little bit about land. Um, we, we got a little bit of information, just smatterings, and I'm excited to ask you questions about what to expect moving forward with land as well. Um, you know, I, I, I love that we have, this is a, this is a kitchen that, that just killed me. I kind of <laughs> think this must be like zoomed way, way in or something, but, um, yeah, I, I, at first when I saw it, I wasn't quite sure what I was seeing. Um, it took me a little while to digest it. Um, but yeah, way, way cool. Excited to see, I, this I am assuming is one of the kind of prototypes of one of the buildings we can all build, um, on our land plots. Is that right? Or, yes. Yeah, so, so, right. So one, so one of the things, right, is all the stuff that I just talked about, right, around, right, like, you know, being closer to the community and, and sharing more, right, and having people to speak directly to the community from the game team, right, a lot of this, right, is not just, I think, about, you know, Origin, maybe we haven't done a better job of, you know, managing and, and, and expectations and talking, talking to you guys through what we're doing. Uh, I think a lot of that also applies to land. Um, I think it's, right, land is so important. It is, right, this collective infinite vision, <laughs> that can be almost so too amorphous, um, right? So we definitely want to share more. Uh, we are working internally on, you know, basically how we can get to a point where we share more of our vision on land without, right, ruining too much of the surprise when things, you know, finally come out. Um, so yeah, <laughs> you know, now it's, and now it's more like, right, like when we ask for, you know, a nice, a nice leak as well, right, to share with the community. Yeah. Uh, you know, the land team is, is super, is super responsive. So, um, yeah, like this is what, they, this is what they gave us for the, for the dev chat. Gotcha. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, looks like a kitchen, right? Like, you know, maybe axes will be cooking up yeah. on their land. And I, and I know Jeff, that you're the growth lead. You're, you're not on the land team specifically. You, you kind of have mm -hmm. your fingers in many pots though. Right. But, uh, one thing I just wanted to put out there on the free transactions, um, they seem to mirror very closely the chest ratios for land. And mm -hmm. I felt like that was um, a useful little um, subtle leak, um, mm -hmm. giving us a little bit of indication of land relative values. Um, and I'm not going to make you comment on that, but I just wanted to to point yeah i mean i think right like you know my for my principle right and i'm i am much closer to the game economy stuff um right my my the principle right that right like rewards should be commensurate i'm not sure if that's the right word uh yeah rewards should be like proportional i i think right yeah. uh to uh right. chest price yeah um you know, it just makes it makes sense, right? And um, it just makes it's it's one of the it's one of the right like bedrocks upon which we have to build, right? Some of the game economy around around land. So. Cool, cool, cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think that we all would be anxious for some some good updated information about land. It feels like kind of the information we have cool. is pretty dated at this point. So, um, looking forward to anything that can be provided by the land team. 
you whoever <laughs> with respect to kind of an update where where things are at with respect to land but uh, I remain very excited for land I think we all kind of feel like it got pushed back pushed back significantly and um, we have a whole list of questions next <laughs> Jiho so let's <laughs> let's get in them into them um, so one question will uh, when will origins mystics get more utility or maybe access emissions over time. Is that something in the plans? Is that something that you can talk about? So it's something that we're talking about internally, um, uh, right? That is really uh, something for the game product team to prioritize in terms of right what they're doing. I will say that I think Right, we've spent so much of the year focused on mass adoption that, right, like some of the collector archetypes have been probably a little bit maybe neglected. Um, so I, I can definitely feel that. You know, as a collector myself, I'm a collector archetype, right? Like yeah. I have, I don't know, 50, 40 mystics. Um, I have, uh, you know, like that's that's definitely me within the ecosystem. Um, so it's like, right, like I would like to, you know, see some more utility. Uh, for the collectible assets within our ecosystem, um, so yeah, I don't, you know, I don't want to put put them into a corner, uh, but yeah, cool. They will, yeah, we're they will, something that's you know, being considered. We understand that they are they've been neglected, um, and yeah, you know, there are a lot of cool experiments that are happening, um, and all, also right, like yeah, in terms like once. Once we actually have vertical progression, right, that, that gets close, much closer to the ballpark of, right, like what the original right, expectations around mystic utility were set to be, right? Like, you know, basically, you know, mystics having unique uh, part upgrade paths, right? I think the word prioritize was an interesting word in there. Um, uh, another thing that kind of goes hand in hand with this and people are asking a lot about is... Uh, Kind of the same question in regards to to land or potentially items um you know it's all the stuff that were were bought or kind of more of a a highlight a few years back um but really haven't gotten the attention that they had deserved and, and there you go baron thanks for pulling that up yeah and i think that that's also in the context of um that it seemed like land got maybe pushed back um a significant amount maybe you know compared to what the roadmap was so yeah so I think, right, like our principle for, right, like a lot of this type of stuff, right, like taxi upgrades, right, right, like for example, even right, like the, we have a lot of play to earn allocate or you know play and earn allocation, right, the gaming issuance, right, like theoretically, right, like we're not using all of that issuance right now, right? Why why aren't we giving out, right, two million AXS per month for the leaderboard, right? If we have that amount. Um, right, it's like because we want to reserve that for when we think, or like think of think of these uh, tokens as a marketing budget uh, for the games, right? Like you want to basically pour oil on the fire when you when you think that you have a product that's worth promoting, right? So we don't, you know, we haven't really thought that you know uh, the current version of the battle system was worth really igniting uh, with further access rewards. Um, and so, yeah, that's basically right. Like when we think that land is ready, you know, I think that's when we'd really turn on the, the spigot, obviously, right? Like when we don't use the budget, right? We have more to use in the future. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's maybe like how, that makes uh, lots of sense. how to think about it. And uh, so, yeah, I will also say that. I, we are pushing uh, internally, right, with, uh, you know, the new guy from the Niantic um, for, right, more to share, more detailed spec to share around land with the community uh, so that we can understand, right, as a community, we can understand more, uh, right, exactly how the, the nitty gritty details of how land is expected to work, right? I think like we should, right? Like we, I think we need to get to a new, 
new type of style where we're sharing, hey, this is how we're thinking about it. It's subject change, um, but at least now you guys know how we're thinking about it. Don't make any economic decisions based on this because it's subject to change, right? Like I think you guys would be probably pretty happy with that type of approach. Absolutely, and and I find it very heartening. So, it, you know, I, when things get pushed back and it could just go into like a, a dark hole, the idea that you're thinking about ways to communicate um, good information about what land, what the land expectations are, and maybe what things are going to look like with respect to land is great. And I think we all just want it as soon as it's possible to share, uh, you know, um, good information that that can help us understand where things are headed. I think that's wonderful. It's definitely heartening to me to hear that that's something that's being considered. Mm -hmm. um, so treasury questions, when will treasury revenue start being distributed to access holders? Um, is, is the treasury, I, I kind of thought that maybe when the access uh, rewards started slipping down that maybe they'd be supplemented a little bit by some of the holdings of access in the treasury. But uh, is that kind of locked down or is it just something that hasn't been decided yet or kind of what's the status of the Treasury? Yeah, so this is something that I think needs to be done. Uh, it needs to be done carefully. Um, and there, there, there needs to be like we're doing research into how to basically how to unlock this in a good way. Um, we're doing research into governance. Um, yeah, like we, I think also like, you know, what's, we, we, we need to hire, I think, and we're in the process of hiring people that can help out with some of this, like, uh, Ronin, uh, it's kind of like a Ronin protocol type of thing, right? Cause that's what the staking contract is on. Um, so yeah, there, there are some hires, uh, that need to be made, uh, to, to do this in a safe, uh, safe way and, and and the best way so um yeah we i don't have i don't have a timeline on it but sure. obviously it's important and uh right the idea is right like as access issuance starts to decline right like the need to you know start turning on the treasury you know starts to increase right so it's in sky mavis is right best interest um to do it in a timely matter right so that's what i'll, I'll say is that we're, you know our interests are aligned here uh, yep. where like that, that's that's most of the money that right this is most of the value that uh we have right um is it possible for cloud white to pop his head in the screen real quick <laughs> we have a celeb we have an original that's, that's my own request so uh, all right well, well oh hey what is up, Cloud? What up, Good bro? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt everyone. That questions are coming in hot. I'll yeah, let you guys man. get back to it. Are you going to show my sweet Axie purchases earlier this week? Dude, nice double. You, you that know? was freaking cool, man. I love I that one, too. Single. Oh, I didn't, I I didn't see the single. I, I, Someone I, thinks that you're my boyfriend, bro. I was just going to point that you're out. 11, bro. <laughs> Chill. Things are getting scandalous in <laughs> Lunasia. I'll let you guys get back to it. I'll pop uh, thanks, in later. Cloud. I I, ha I knew he was. Don't there. pop in too hard. So cool. <laughs> Love you, Cloud. Um, okay. I'm, I'm <laughs> um, just just sign off of Twitter for the next week. Uh, level two parts. We've already talked about origins, so I don't think I'm going to ask that question. Uh, yeah, level two parts very important. It's I think like very key to uh, the success of Axie, um, and it's one of the things, right? Like, yeah, it it I it think it's incredible that we got this far without upgrading, but I think it actually set uh, puts us in a better position that we started we got this far without upgrading. If that makes sense, because. It's kind of weird if you start upgrading before everyone arrives, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. right? Like, how would you feel if you started playing a game and then all these people, they have like super upgraded stuff and you're like, oh, like, well, I just started the game. Like, what? You've been upgrading this stuff since 2018, since 2019, since 2020, right? Like, that's why you need to start upgrading when the game is ready for a mainstream audience because you want, right? Like, you want people to go on this upgrading journey together if that makes sense yeah um 
Yeah, but on the other hand, it is, I know that one thing, I'm kind of competitive like you. Like, I, um, when I see people who have upgraded things, it uh, inspires me and encourages me to work hard to, to catch up or make mine yeah. as cool as the other people. So there, there's both parts of it, but I agree. That that makes sense. Um, it, it does not feel completely equivalent in a, or a, giving you like a, I mean, even if people can progress at different rates, um, having people start a race at different times feels a little, a little rough in a game, um, like that. Yeah. So, that I think, sense. I think the thing is, right. Like you want it to be competitive. Definitely. Right. Like that's gonna, right. Like people flexing, uh, people flexing their upgraded stuff is going to be like a huge thing. But yeah, like I, I think, right. Like you want it to, the timing is kind of important and right like i mean there, it's it's a it's a balancing thing right but i think we can agree that right if people had been able to start upgrading their axes in 2018 that kind of would have been off right so um there's something to that idea um yeah, yeah. so this next one i think can be summarized just in um asking does the team is the team happy with where like the axie floor is at is that something the team even thinks about um are there are there plans to try to make your normal axi um, more valuable over time? Is that part of the whole um, the whole uh, formula, the whole plan, or I don't know? Is there anything you can speak to on that one? Do you, do you guys want to? It, does the team want to see just kind of common axi mm -hmm. prices rise, or is that not necessarily a good way to? Um, frame what they want to see with respect to normal axes. I think, right, like our goal is to bring billions of people to Web3 um, and to grow this community to, you know, hundreds of millions of people, billions of people. Um, I think that's the main thing that we focus on. Um, the, you know, the floor prices of axes, uh, the floor prices of axes are really, right, they're more of a derivative of right what how much how how fun people think the game is plus what people's future expected earnings are from playing the game. So those are going to right what what can we actually I mean so what can we actually control there right We can make the game more fun. We can open up more experiences right. If each axie or each team of axes is a ticket to a world of experiences right, we can make sure that there's value for that ticket by making sure that there's a bunch of fun rides uh, in that amusement park. Um, and on the, on the other hand, right, like if we can create interesting and fun gameplay and reasons to spend, then, right, like, you know, then people, you know, that opens up the possibility of being able to actually use these axes to earn. So yeah, I think that's the, that's the framework that I think about it at least in. Awesome. You know, All I right. think, I th I yeah, think you're in an interesting space, right? Being tied to crypto, being tied to these, uh, I, I mean, having people have to make investments into it. Um, you know, you're, you're almost like, if, if prices are low, people don't see the possibility. It, it's kind of like if you look at some of the, the more popular profile pictures, right? Part of the reason they're popular is because the price is obscenely high and they have all these crazy, um, you know, these crazy sales every week. Um, and and it, at, at one point, it was the same with the Axie ecosystem, right? When when things were high, it kind of signaled that things are doing good. Um, and, and then you've got the other side of it, like you mentioned, you know, it, it, it also signals that that SLP price is high, that people are earning, that it's worth the investment, you know, if, if those things are high. So it, it, like I said, it's almost an unfortunate position to be in um, because if, uh, you know, if you want mass adoption, the easiest way to get that is for the prices to be low. The, you know, for the prices to be 29, you know, bucks per, per axi. Um, it's, but it's part of the cycle, right? Yeah. I think like, I think actually what I prefer is for it to fluctuate. <laughs> uh, it, I, w I like to see, I like to see that uh, fluctuation, right? Where, right, like it's ne it's needed, right? Like, I mean, I, you know, like I, I think right, all we can do is really, you know, build awesome stuff, build an amazing community and make sure that Right, there are reasons for people to participate in this digital nation. This is a, this is a real right. Like the earnings are going to come when people are spending in Axie for the same reasons that you spend in your real life. Um, so yeah, I, I, that's something to mull over. 
you know, I think that that's true with SLP. I think it just got the supply just got completely out of hand. So I'm excited mm -hmm. to see um, the fixes there. Okay, so what is the next action for SLP burning after all the feedback gained, seeing as origin is month months away? I think we've kind of already covered that because really I don't, it doesn't make sense from what we just to kind of recap, it doesn't really make sense to introduce a lot of burning mechanisms. We do have the Lunar New Year. It sounds like there may be others that are similar types of um, engagements like that. But really, until we get origin, um, it really doesn't make us make a ton of sense to affect the emission or sorry, the burning side of things. Instead, maybe it makes sense to to throttle the emissions side of things. Um, governance, just kind of uh, governance in general. Do you see voting happening fairly soon as far as like the access holders? Do you think we'll see a governance vote maybe in 2022? Um, how, how do you feel about that? So we need to do research on this, right? right? Like uh, the history of in-game governance, actually, there are things to look at, right? Like the EVE Online, right? Happens to have like kind of a real economy and they also, have to, they also happen to have, right? This council of players. Um, like, I think, you know, there are different, there are different ways that voting could happen, right? Like we need to have a discussion on what kind of government do we want to have, right? Uh, I don't, th right, like we talked in the, in the white paper, we talk about the Axie score, right? Like, it's not just going to be, we can't have a system where whoever owns the most AXS gets to decide, you know, what's happening, right? So I think we need to be very careful. I think the community is already starting to have a big impact on the direction of the game by giving feedback. I think that's step one. I think step two would be you know, something like creating a council for, you know, PVP balancing and maybe the economy. Maybe these councils could, right, like just start to figure out like what is the scope of the things that the community could be voting on and then creating governance proposals and then, right, like, uh, and then, right, having people vote. But I don't think that voting purely with access right like as your sole determinant makes sense like i think mm -hmm. that there are a variety of things that should make sense that, that should be taken into account and that different things should be taken into account for different types of voting yeah uh if that makes sense right like if you me. own a lot of land and mystic axes right then maybe you know you should be able to say have more say on certain issues but then if you have a high mmr in the arena maybe that affects you know your voting weight on other issues right that are more tied to the battle system so this is all to say that, right, like, it, yeah, there is not much to reverse engineer here. Do we want to be, do we want to create a whole new system of, right, gaming governance? Or do we want to sit back a little bit and reverse engineer, you know, some experiments that seem to be going in an interesting direction and kind of add our own unique twist on it? I love um, that. What a, what a good philosophical political discussion, man. I, I, I love all that. And Joy, what did you what did you think? <laughs> You're shaking your head at me. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I've watched uh, a lot of these governance discussions um, over the years, and a lot of them have been failures. So I think taking it slow yeah. makes a lot of sense. I, yeah. I honestly, right? Like we can't get we can't descend into mob rule. We can't descend into totally total uh, whale rule. Uh, so yeah, like we're we're we you know I'm I'm doing some R and D. I'm doing research on right like. What kind of governance type of system would work? It's difficult, man. It's like creating a real government. Like you can't. It's not. It's, you can't yeah. just right like create this forum and say, hey, like you know, sign with your axis, right? That's not gonna end. That's not gonna. That's in no ways like an improvement just a complete on the current plutocracy. system. Yeah, right? yeah it's, it's not. A, in no way the, an improvement on the current systems, which are right like have been refined for thousands of years and draw draw on Blackstonian. <laughs> law yep. and you know the athenian uh, agora right yeah uh, so yeah it, it's 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 really hard um Hi, representative yeah, democracies but... are not bad they seem to be doing pretty well recently so yeah okay. uh, outside of the outside of the governance you had mentioned axi score um and i know that there's a lot of other pieces to that you know aside from the governance do you have any sort of soft timeline for when that might be implemented We don't have any deadlines on it. Um, 
Right, because I mean, we could do it quickly if we want to do like a, a sloppy, quick job. Uh, but if we want to do something that right could potentially change the history of thought and gaming, uh, in gaming, right? Like, you know, it's hard to put a timeline on something like that. Um, but like, what I'm gonna do is hack. What we're gonna do is hack in the right direction, right? I think the community feels like they have more say recently, right? Why? Because we're starting to ask for your, you know, ask for your opinions, catalog those opinions, share, you know, and reshare, uh, and and you know, engage in in thoughtful dialogue. Um, so we're, you know, we're 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 seeing it start to evolve. Um, yeah. You know, I think like phase one is right, like having the community, right, like really uh, put out their ideas and have them taken seriously. Right, part two is like something around, right, like some sort of a council and then the creation of uh, proposals and, you know, almost like basically legislation. And then I think, yeah, as I mentioned, right, it's like it has to do with, right, like figuring out what are the, you know, you know, what are the ways to weight a vote um, based on certain things? Why, like, why do you have to weight a vote? rather than right just saying one person one vote well because right like blockchain is not civil resistant right like unless we you, like there is no way to basically figure out whether one person is one person um therefore you actually have to go into wait uh vote waiting and you don't want to just make it so that someone is voting with their axs uh and can or like basically who has the most axs wins right like you you want it to be a more sophisticated system Love it. All right. Um, let's see. I think we already talked about potential throttling of SOP. I don't know that that one's. Um, yeah, uh, I'd like I would to. Say, I was, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll answer that one. I'll answer yeah, that one. Do it. The crowd wants me to answer that, right? So, yeah, AK's thread was really good. I read it, I retweeted it. I think, you know, the ideas are really, really sound. Um, I would say it's like, you know, really, yeah, really good. I would say, yeah, dev time, communication, right? Like, so if we want to do something, I mean, first of all, we've actually already been making changes, right, uh, in, uh, in the background uh, and working on, right, like making economic changes with rollout of season 20, um, right? Like, how does that happen, right? Like the game product team, the game economy team, they'll work together to drop some initial proposals, right? Like, here's where we want to focus. These are the numbers that we're thinking. And then, right, there will be debate. There'll be a lot of back and forth. Also, we'll look at things from the community and say, hey, like, you know, I think the way that they're thinking about it, it makes a lot more sense, uh, doing some modeling. And then, right, like between maybe like, you know, 10 to, you know, 15 different edits um, on that stuff, right, we'll kind of arrive at the final numbers, right? Then it has to be, right, like, we have to make sure that it doesn't require, you know, too much heavy lifting from the dev team, has to be implemented, have to figure out how to communicate it in the best ways using the perfect words so that people understand why we're making the changes. Um, so yeah, there, there's a lot to, and, into going and to making, uh, into making uh, and into doing this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, like, there, there is definitely lag time between when we make our final decision and it's actually implemented. Um, but yeah, obviously we want to go fast and we, we want to be snappy as well. So. Awesome. Love it. Um, hey, Jiho, before we get on to the next question, um, something that just occurred to me is, you know, one of the narratives from maybe late last year was that we'll need billions of SLP in order to make, you know, millions of axes for the amount of growth that's coming up. Um, recently, that narrative's kind of changed, right? We've, we're kind of seeing an, an overabundance of SLP and it's affecting the economy. Um, you know, what? I, I guess, where did your opinion of that shift or did it shift? Um, how, how do you view that now? I mean, so one of the things, right, is we've seen that if things get too unbalanced in terms of the you know mint burn in the short term but right it causes a lot of issues uh you know with with the economy with the economic volatility um and right like what we can do right is i mean if 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 when origin comes out 
we feel like we need to grow faster and we need more axes, right? We can lower the breeding fee or we can increase mint at that time. So we feel like, right, like there's more drastic action that's needed in the short run. I think the community agrees with us. Um, so yeah, I would say like, right, like, yeah, uh, it, it's, it's not, it wouldn't have been possible for us to just, right, like adjust some stuff and go smooth sailing, um, you know, into the origin launch. Could we have done things better? Could we have adjusted numbers better? Like, I'm sure that's all, that's always possible. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I, I think, right, like, it's clear that, right, like, we've been living in, right, like, kind of a, a strange kind of situation where, right, like, the amount, there, the amount of SLP being minted per day for a long time, for months now, has been way above uh, the burn. And we need to get them closer to parity uh, as we prepare for, you know, introduction of new burn mechanics. Yeah, I mean, all these things are interconnected and we, we basically have, I mean, we have access, but in, in essence, we still have almost a single token economy um, based on SLP and axes being minted by SLP, basically. I mean, Axis has a point, a part of that. Um, do you feel good about the parity of Axis and SLP as far as the breed cost right now? I mean, I guess we're kind of in a situation where we're not getting a whole bunch of burns, so uh, mm. maybe that, maybe that's not. I mean, I mean, the interesting thing, right, is, I mean, if you look at the amount of SLP that's being burned per day right now, 40 million, right? Like, how much was being burned on January 1st, right? It's like... Uh, let me check. Well, on the first day that Ronin came out, like the first days, we were at like, you know, 500,000, 713,000, right? So it's like uh, the amount of SLP being burned has still gone up, right? Almost 100x since the release of Ronin, right? It's, but the, the user base has gone up way more than that, right? Um, so yeah, I think right like it's 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 clear that we need to get it closer to parity uh, for a little bit, at least you know as we prepare for prepare for more burn mechanisms to be introduced. Once you know, as we have more burn in the ecosystem, you know it's you know we can start to ramp up uh, emission again as well, right? Yeah. Um, it really depends on right how you know how fast we can grow and how much spending. Um, and how much burn we can induce through the introduction of, of new stuff. But in the as we get as we build towards that moment, we need to get issuance under control to make sure that right we don't have a total uh, and complete and very irrecoverable collapse of the economy. Yeah, it's interesting too with the SLP issuance because it felt like we were kind of trending toward more stable or even maybe a little bit less but just even the last couple of days it really spiked up is it was fascinating so yeah um uh what about what about growth i mean i i guess kind of what enjoy asked actually was partially part of this last question um um i mean it, it doesn't seem possible to just push the extreme growth button because if, if people understood how that worked, uh, you know, any, everybody would, would do that. Um, right. So, um, what, what do you think about, uh, moving forward in the future? I mean, really origin's gotta be so, a so really historically, game, right? yeah. historically, what does growth come from? Right? Like we've gone through, you know, multiple great growth periods. Right. And one of them was right. Yeah. Like when we, release new gameplay and some of it was when we released right like had new marketing campaigns like got you know on binance right that started to supercharge our growth as well so some of it was also just the nft market nft is becoming you know more mainstream um so yeah i think like right simple bottom line if we keep building then that is right building is the way to uh supercharge the economy and supercharge our growth um so yeah, yeah, I think right. Like that's that's why people are always right. Like, you know, asking for when's the next thing coming out, right? Because they're they're addicted, <laughs> and they're they're looking forward to uh, to growth. And that's um, great. It's hard. Yeah, it's really hard, right? Like, it's really really difficult. Um, yeah, it's really difficult. Like, what are there any are there any like yeah like economic systems 
are very difficult to have to have them be like sustainable right like a lot of a lot of uh even like the current economic systems right some people would say that right current economic growth is not necessarily sustainable in the real world right like oh, i don't know like we're you know destroying uh right destroying right, stuff course. and polluting yeah. stuff right like uh, right. Uh, it, we, like what would happen to society if we stopped having 